throw away because I have too much pride to ask normally. I dislike talking about myself, but I guess I have to for context. I met Anna in college. Before that, I served five years as a combat engineer for the Marines. I did stuff. I had stuff done to me. That's as much as I want to expand on that. I got out and immediately enrolled in my local college. I was still definitely in the transition period between military and civilian life and all its ups and downs. Missing my boys, frustration at how regular people acted, all that stuff every vet goes through. I was lucky and found a group that adopted me, basically. Anna was one of them, and we hit it off. Eventually, we both got the courage to go out, and long story short, we started dating. We dated for seven months, and I thought everything was great. We went on dates, I got her gifts, and I made sure to meet her outside for class every day so I could walk her home. And I don't think this is relevant, but I have seen these stories on TikTok, so I guess I have to say the intimacy life was good as well. But that was never important to me. I loved cuddling with her, talking to her, just being around her. Three weekends ago, an old friend from the Corps was getting out and was driving across the country back to his home, and he would pass through our city. So I offered for him to stay with me. I have an apartment with my brother. We decided to go out like the old times, wandering red light districts on Liberty during deployment. And just like then, he got so drunk he wandered off, and I lost him. Eventually, we found each other and got back. The next morning, my friend said he had something he needed to show me. He said he didn't remember that night, but he had pictures on his phone. It was blurry because of his wobbly butt and the club lights, but it was a picture of Anna grinding on another dude. I was sure of it. It was taken from a club down the road from the bar I originally lost my friend at. I was never one to leap without looking, so I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. We're in the capital city of our state. How many women who look like her were in this city anyway? I went to class and afterwards, I tracked down Anna's best friend. They always go out together, so if she was at a club, the best friend would 100% be there. So I found her and asked her if they went out last night. She denied it, so I said it was weird because my friend saw Anna and the friend started stammering and saying he was mistaken. And while he was drunk enough, he very well could have been. Her reaction was just so unbelievable. It sealed the deal for me. I just said, uh-huh, sure, and walked away and continued my day as normal. It's not very healthy, but I can dissociate on command and just continue on. It's how I got through some of the worst times in the core, so I think I just fell back on it. You never rise to the occasion, you fall on your training. I didn't wait for Anna after class, first time since we started dating. When I got back to my house, I don't really know why, but I put on my old boots and went running. I ran until the sun went down and I realized I had left my phone on my bed. I got back to a million texts and missed calls from Anna. Her texts were textbook stages of grief. She tried telling me it wasn't her, then berating me for not talking to her, which turned into her begging that I respond. Then her texts started getting bad. She admitted it was her, but nothing happened. Then she went down the list. It was only a dance. I only kissed him once. It was just one time. It meant nothing. It had to be hundreds of words of her just melting down that I wouldn't talk to her. And even if I did have my phone on me, I don't know if I would have. I had nothing to say to her. The text barrage just ended with her repeating, she was sorry. I texted back, it's over, and blocked her. Once again, I fell back on my training. Well, I mean trauma, and I just walled myself off. I'm fully aware that none of this is healthy, but shoot happens. I just continued on. I ignored the friend group because the way I see it, they're her friends before they were mine. I won't ask them to choose, so I'll just stay away, which sucked because they were my only friends at this school. This continued for a while until yesterday. I was cornered by the group, and they started telling me how Anna had a mental breakdown and is in a really bad place. She won't leave her room and spends all her time looking at pictures of us. They said she loved me and the other guy meant nothing. I just stared at them blankly, and then her best friend started demanding I go see her and apologize for what I am putting her through, saying, don't you even know the hell she's going through right now because of you? 
The amount of strength it took for me not to break my bearing and start in on all of them was astronomical. And holy shoot, I thought they were my friends. This little cornering just shredded any last frick I had. So I just responded, I know, I just don't care, and started walking away. One of my ex-friends tried to stop me, but stood down when I pushed him aside. I know Anna has a history of mental instability. She's had a few incidents in high school, but her doctor finally found the right cocktail to put her on and she was better. And I meant what I said. I really don't care if Anna won't leave her room. If she does something stupid and hurts herself, I might care again. As much as she hurt me, she's still a human. And I don't want that for anyone. Hope my ex-friends help her. She needs support, not a shitty job at intimidating me to forgive her. So I guess the advice I'm asking for is, do I make sure she's okay? Should I go and at least make sure she's okay? We won't ever have what we did again, but I don't want her doing anything stupid, and I'm willing to sacrifice my emotions for that. Should I go make sure she's okay? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, remember this. Had your drunken buddy not run into her and taken photos just to be sure, she and her friends would have lied and gaslighted you into accepting a cheater. And if she got away with it once, she'll likely do it again. This may not have been the first time, which with how quickly it escalated, I doubt it was. No, do yourself a favor and stay no contact. If she had any love for you at all, then you've taught her a valuable lesson. Actions have consequences. Move on from her. There are four billion other options out there. Comment two, no. She has her friend group and more to rely on. All you have left between you is time and effort on your part. You can feel sympathy towards someone experiencing the consequences of their choices without getting personally involved. Call for a wellness check if it's a big enough concern. You aren't a psychologist or emergency services. You have to decide for yourself how much you can afford to commit to a charity case. If it requires your field medical training, you really should call someone else. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a tense three months since then, and boy do I have an update for you. So after I pushed past my ex-friend and walked away from the group, I thought that was the end of it. I was wrong. I kept to myself, focusing on school and the gym, trying to rebuild a life without Anna and the friends I thought I had. But life, as it seems, wasn't done throwing curveballs my way. Two weeks ago, my brother, who I share an apartment with, sat me down for a talk. He's always been the more perceptive one, and he could tell something was eating at me. I hadn't told him the full story about Anna, just that we broke up. But that day, he told me he knew there was more to it. He had seen the change in me, the way I'd become more withdrawn. I finally spilled everything, from the night out with my core buddy to the confrontation with the friend group. My brother listened, nodding along, until I mentioned the part about Anna's best friend demanding I apologize. That's when his face changed, and he dropped the news on me. He had seen Anna's best friend and my ex-friend, the one who tried to stop me getting cozy at a coffee shop. They were laughing, touching, and looking way too comfortable with each other. The same best friend who was supposedly loyal to Anna. I was floored. It felt like another betrayal, but this time, it was a betrayal to Anna. Despite everything, I couldn't shake the feeling that she deserved to know. It was clear her best friend wasn't the supportive angel she pretended to be. I wrestled with what to do for days. I didn't want to get involved, but I also couldn't ignore the injustice of it. In the end, I decided to send Anna an email. I kept it brief, just stating that her best friend might not be as loyal as she thought and that she should keep an eye out. I didn't expect a reply, and I didn't get one, but that wasn't the end of it. A few days after I sent the email, I was leaving the library when I saw Anna. She looked like she had been crying, but there was a fire in her eyes I hadn't seen before. She marched right up to me, and to my shock, thanked me. She had confronted her best friend, and the truth had come out. Not only had her best friend been seeing my ex-friend behind her back, but she had also been the one to encourage Anna to dance with that other guy the night my core buddy took the picture. Anna was devastated, not just by my breakup, but now by the betrayal of her closest friend. She told me she was done with them all, 
that she needed to focus on herself and her mental health. She said she didn't expect anything from me, but she was grateful for the heads up. I didn't know what to say. I just nodded, told her to take care of herself, and walked away. It was a strange feeling knowing that despite everything, I had helped her in some small way. Since then, I've seen Anna around campus a few times. We don't talk, but there's a nod of acknowledgement between us now. It's weird, but it's something. As for me, I've started to open up a bit more. I've been hanging out with some guys from my classes and it's been good to connect with people again. I'm not ready to dive into any new friendships just yet, but I'm taking it one day at a time. GF told me not to get her flowers on her B-Day, but her ex sent her some. She accused me of not trusting her. Oh boy, she kept them. I tried to make it up to her, but she accused me of manipulating her. We broke up. Later, she confessed she had been talking to her ex for months and still had feelings for him. Oh boy, I felt betrayed. We ran into each other at a mutual friends event. Hey all, the last few days have been rough on my relationship, so I was looking for some neutral opinions on the situation. The situation goes as follows. I, 22-year-old male, was on the phone with my girlfriend, 24-year-old female, the evening before her birthday. At around 12.30 a.m. on the morning of her birthday, she received flowers, not from me. I was specifically told by her to not get her flowers on her birthday, after which she brought them in, asked if I was still on the phone, then said she was going to bed. When I asked who they were from, she said she hadn't read the card yet. Later that day when we were talking, I brought up how this made me uncomfortable. She went into how I do not trust her and how that is not okay. When the question of if she kept the flowers came up, she mentioned she did and has them in a vase and will absolutely not be getting rid of them. What should I do about this? Edit for clarity. I did not ask her to throw them out. Her reply was in response to me asking if she kept them. The ex did deliver them. Ex and her have had some contact, but I am only told about work-related things. Edit two. For clarity, to my understanding, the ex dropped them off, but he was not present when she opened the door and saw them. Her justification for not knowing who they were from was that the note was signed with the initials of a name he used to be called by her sister's friends, e.g. HF. After bringing it up, she ended the conversation with something to the extent of, I want tomorrow to be about me. So if you can't do that, let's wait to talk until the weekend. Ultimately, I decided to put it on hold and let her birthday pass, and then deal with it. I sent her a very lengthy and sweet birthday message, approximately five to six lines on iMessage, to which I received a simple thank you. After she replied, I gave her a call offering to grab her something from her favorite breakfast spot, and I was told she didn't want it, and that she was going to go back to sleep. After this, I felt like she did not want to interact with me that day, so I did not push any further. Later she texted me, quite upset that I had not made any effort for her that day. Later that night we had a FaceTime and I wanted to listen to why she felt the way she did, apologize for the way things turned out, and attempt to explain why I did what I did. Today I received a lengthy chain of texts saying how she was talking to her sister and she thinks I am trying to manipulate her and basically explain how she felt like I tried to blame her for the way things turned out. I don't want this to be the case. I don't want it to feel like I'm blaming her for anything when I try to talk about why I felt the way I did. I've apologized and acknowledged that I misinterpreted her desires. Even aside from the flower thing, what are some ways to talk to people about your feelings without making it seem like you're blaming them? I also tried to take her out in the evening which she did not want to do, and rather decided to have a discussion about things, which is why the flowers got brought back up. Edit 3. We are going to have a talk tomorrow. We'll update after. Thank you everyone for the replies. They have been very helpful. Update. We have had our talk, and I ended things. I approached the breakup from the perspective of not being compatible with our methods of communication. I wanted to keep it as civil as possible, as we are part of some small circles in terms of career and friends, so I'd like to maintain a solid perception. At some points, she tried to take it in the direction of an argument. 
However, I just made it very clear I was not here to argue or work anything out, and that I felt like we would not be able to handle disagreements well in the future, so it was best to call things off. I appreciate all the comments and replies. I felt the way many of you had iterated, manipulated, gaslit, emotionally invalidated, etc. But I tried my best to not bias the updates with those emotions to try to get as neutral of opinions as possible. Honestly, right now, I just feel relieved, which I think is very telling. Additional update, I did not include this in the original post because I was so emotionally drained at that point and did not feel like typing it out again, had told other close friends over text. But I think the thing that really sealed it beyond belief was how she responded to my last attempt to try and make things better. On the day she spoke to her sister, I responded to the manipulation text with something to the extent of, I see you and I hear what you are saying. I had no intention of making you feel that way and I'm sorry that I did. To which she responded that she's sorry that I did too and that she was going to go nap. Later that day, I texted to ask if she was free. And after three hours, I basically got a no, but I could drop some stuff off. At this point, I had been running out while she was not responding and gathering all of her favorite foods and treats, along with writing a card. After I gave it to her, I went back and was texted things along these lines. If you want the pastries, please take them back. I'm so confused. Was this supposed to make anything better? You hardly looked at me. At this point, I was pretty much done and replied with something like, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm not going to be told I'm not trying when I am. And when I try to do something, I can't have it where only the things I did wrong are acknowledged. At this point, she finally made some attempt to be understanding, saying thank you for the gifts and that she didn't say I wasn't trying. To me, it seemed like I only got that response because it seemed like I was finally done. In any case, it is over now and time to move on. I don't think she physically cheated as many in the comments do. However, at this point, I do not care. All I hope is that I better know what to look for next time and find someone that works better for me personally. Thank you to everyone for the advice and for listening to me and my problems. I hope everyone here has a wonderful day. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I'm assuming the ex hand delivered them as deliveries do not occur at 12.30 a.m. Then she just went to bed? Seems shady. I wonder if he spent the night. Also, why would she specifically tell you not to buy flowers? I do not know, but I do know I do not like it. Proceed with caution. Comment 2. The flowers were delivered by the other guy she is sleeping with. She asked if you were still there because she was not sure if you heard him talking. She said she was going to bed to be intimate with him and is now gaslighting you about it. Have some self-respect. Ditch her. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me through this whole mess. It's been a wild couple of weeks since my last update and I've got to say, things have taken some unexpected turns. So after I ended things with my girlfriend, I thought that would be it. I was ready to move on and start healing. But life had other plans. Remember how I mentioned we were part of the same small circles in our careers and friends? Well, that made avoiding her nearly impossible. Just a few days after the breakup, we both ended up at a mutual friends get together. It was awkward, to say the least. I tried to keep my distance, but she approached me with this look in her eyes that I couldn't quite read. She pulled me aside, and that's when the bomb dropped. She confessed that the flowers from her ex weren't just a birthday gesture. They had been talking for months, and she admitted that she still had feelings for him. I was floored. All this time, I thought we were having communication issues, but it was so much more than that. The heartbreak hit me like a ton of bricks. I had trusted her, and she had been hiding this huge secret from me. It felt like a punch in the gut, and I had to get out of there. I left the party early, feeling more alone than ever. Over the next few days, I couldn't shake off the feeling of betrayal. I kept replaying our past conversations in my head, trying to spot the signs I had missed. It was torture. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, I was a mess. Then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I ran into her again at a work event. She tried to talk to me, maybe to explain herself or apologize, I don't know. 
but I couldn't do it. I couldn't stand there and listen to her try to justify her actions. So I walked away mid-sentence. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but I needed to protect myself. The next day, she sent me a text. She wanted to return some of my things that she still had. We agreed to meet up, and that's when the confrontation happened. She handed me a box of my stuff, and I could see she had been crying. She started to say something about how she messed up and how she wished things could be different, but I didn't want to hear any of it. I told her that it was too late for regrets and that she should have thought about that before going behind my back. She tried to defend herself, saying that she was confused and didn't mean to hurt me, but I wasn't having any of it. I took my box, told her I wished her the best, and left. Since then, I've been doing my best to pick up the pieces of my broken heart. I've been spending time with friends, focusing on work, and trying to stay busy. It's not easy, but I'm getting through it, one day at a time. And just when I thought I was starting to get over her, I saw them together. I was grabbing coffee, and there they were, sitting at a table, laughing and looking like the perfect couple. It was like a scene from a movie, except it was my life, and it was happening right in front of me. I felt sick to my stomach, but I didn't let them see me. I left the coffee shop immediately, my hands shaking and my heart racing. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, and I'm still trying to find my footing. But I'm learning a lot about myself and what I want in a relationship. I'm realizing that trust and honesty are non-negotiable for me, and I won't settle for anything less. Sis guilt trips me to stay with her and her BF, but I tell her I'm moving out in May. Then she tells me she's prego with her BF and he hasn't been looking for a job. A while ago I made a post explaining a situation where my girlfriend's sister started living with us, and it's been hell. I had deleted the post instead of muting the notifications by accident, as I didn't expect it to gain traction, when it asked if I was sure I didn't realize what for, lol. The post I made was unanimous in saying, we just need to tell them and leave. Most were kind. Some called us pussies, but I can't blame them. Well, good news for anyone who saw the OG post and for the people just joining in, but we did tell them in the beginning of January. We were extremely anxious about it, but when we talked about it, we felt relief off our shoulders. Of course, her sister cried about it, saying a lot of things to try to convince us to stay, and we firmly just said we wanted to leave. But we did not say because of her, we simply said we wanted to be on our own since the last five years living out on our own, it was never us two, since we had a roommate for the first three years and now her sister. She admitted defeat and said she was fine with it, and now we're moving out in May once our lease ends. It doesn't come without the weekly comments to guilt us to stay, all from her sister, which we have had answers for each one. I don't want us to lose contact, stop talking after all this. We always invite them out to eat or explore, play games, watch movies, bring them with us to visit our respective families for the holidays. Always a no. Doesn't help every time she does try to talk to us, it ends in her guilting, blaming my girlfriend. It's hard to find a job nowadays. I don't know if boyfriend's name can help me with paying for a new space. It's now been one year since he's been here. We can say for certain he only applied to one place and gave us no update. I'm sure him saying he doesn't want to work somewhere that pays him below X dollars amount doesn't mean anything. There's plenty more, but we have been growing thicker skin and now just looking forward to living just us together. Might not necessarily need a post, but just wanted to make this to thank the people on here that encouraged, kicked our asses to take a stand. Is there anything we should plan ahead for in handling a person with this kind of personality? Edit 1. Thank you all for the comments. We definitely are more aware of the consequences if the sister-in-law doesn't move out, and we'll definitely work on that and ensure everything works out for us in the end. I don't spend every day on Reddit, so I'll stop replying for now, but I'll definitely update months down the line when things come to motion, or sooner if shoot hits the fan, which it shouldn't. Anyways, thanks again. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. 1. Congratulations on taking a stand. 2. Take pictures of everything as it looks when you leave. 3. Be positive and give the sister lots of encouragement whenever she makes a comment. It sounds like there's a lot of fear there. 
Four, keep working on the checklist for her sister, maybe even including budgeting pointers. Five, remember, as two functioning adults, it's desirable to be independent. Good luck, and I'm excited for your next chapter. Comment two. Yes, our lease ends in May, and we already have a place that we are prepared to go to. For my girlfriend's sister and her boyfriend, on the other hand, we are not certain. She has a job, but he doesn't, nor does it seem like he's made any effort in the past month to look for any. We were urged in my previous post that it was not our problem, and we agree, so hopefully they figure that out. Thanks for the peace. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for the support on my last post. A lot has happened since then, and I'm back with an update that's been a whirlwind of emotions and events. So, we were counting down the days until May, ready to start our new chapter. But life had other plans. My girlfriend's sister, let's call her Sarah, had been unusually quiet after our talk. We thought maybe she was finally coming to terms with our decision. That was until one evening when we found her crying in the living room. She confessed that she was pregnant. The father? None other than her boyfriend who couldn't be bothered to find a job. This revelation threw us for a loop. We had always known Sarah to be reckless, but this was next level. My girlfriend, being the caring person she is, felt torn. She wanted to support her sister, but also didn't want to postpone our plans. We had a long talk and decided to stick to our move-out date but we'd help Sarah find a new place and get settled before we left. The following weeks were tense. Sarah's boyfriend finally got a job, but it was clear he wasn't thrilled about the baby. He'd come home late, avoid Sarah, and barely interact with us. It was like living with a ghost who occasionally raided the fridge. Then came the bombshell. Sarah's boyfriend confessed that he wasn't sure if he was the father. He had cheated on Sarah around the time she got pregnant. The atmosphere in the apartment became toxic. Arguments erupted nightly, and my girlfriend and I were caught in the middle, trying to mediate. In the midst of this chaos, my girlfriend and I found a beautiful apartment. It was perfect for us, and we put down a deposit. We were excited, but also felt guilty for leaving Sarah in such a mess. As May approached, Sarah's situation seemed to stabilize. She and her boyfriend were going to couples counseling and she had started prenatal care. We helped her look for apartments, but she was struggling to find something affordable on her own. Then, two weeks before our move out date, Sarah dropped another surprise. She had decided to keep the baby and raise it with her boyfriend. They were going to move back to her hometown to be closer to her family. It was a bittersweet moment. We were happy she had a plan, but it also meant we'd see less of her. The day we moved out, Sarah and her boyfriend came to say goodbye. It was awkward, but civil. They thanked us for our help and promised to keep in touch. As they drove away, my girlfriend and I felt a mix of relief and sadness. We were finally on our own, but we couldn't shake the feeling that Sarah's story was far from over. We spent the next few days unpacking and settling into our new place. It was peaceful, just the two of us. We'd occasionally get updates from Sarah, she had found a job in her hometown, and her boyfriend was trying to be more involved. But then, one evening, we got a call that changed everything. Sarah was in the hospital. There had been complications with her pregnancy. We rushed to be by her side. After a tense few hours, Sarah gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. The father was there, looking overwhelmed but present. As we held our niece for the first time, we felt a strange mix of joy and heartache. Sarah had a long road ahead of her, but she wasn't alone. She had her family, her boyfriend, and now her daughter. We drove home that night, our minds racing. Our new life was just beginning, but we couldn't help but feel connected to the life we had left behind. It was a reminder that even when you move on, you never really leave the past behind. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.